Hey, Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Changing a tyre is pretty easy on the road, on the streets, on the highway. However, when you're off-road, it's not so simple. There are a lot of things that we see that people just forget about or don't realise. So experienced off-roaders and four-wheelers, you probably know what I'm talking about here. All beginners, and for those who have never actually changed a tyre off-road, there are a lot of different situations. So I'm going to cover those, and we're going to look at our standard kit and I'm going to show you what you actually need and what you don't need. We got some stuff to show you guys. Let's go shoot some stuff. So I can show you every single little thing and what you might need depending on who you are and how you like to fix your tires. So stay tuned. These are my standard tools for my Land Cruiser. Now every vehicle was a bit different, although this isn't completely useless for the purpose of lifting your vehicle off the ground when you've got bigger tires and a bigger lift, this is useless, pretty much rendered useless off-road. Throw that away. Your tire iron. This may not be good enough because this was made for your standard rim. So if your standard rim was a positive 20 offset, I'll do a different video on offsets if you're not sure what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where the actual face of the rim is. If you have a deep dish rim because you've increased your offset to go out, this may not reach in. This may actually get stuck on your rim. So this may also be useless. Some vehicles have a device where you can lower your back tyre down, your spare tyre if it's sitting underneath your vehicle. Make sure you have this with all the stuff I'm going to talk about somewhere easy and accessible because I've had numerous times I've tried to help someone change their tyre and they don't know where they put this. It could have been from possibly even an accident. They're in shock. They don't know where they put this and you look at the obvious place and you cannot find it. So this is something I wanted to bring up here. There will be a lot of points I'm going to bring up here. And I think we're going to go straight into jacks. What jacks do you actually need? Now jacks I can talk about all day. So I'll do a specific video on high lift versus air jack versus bottle jack. But we're just going to cover generally what you actually need. In my experience, what jack do you need? That's a bit of a toughy one, depends on your car. Now, before we talk about jacks, you need a spade. But I call these a bloody shovel. So you need, you need a shovel or a spade. So we'll throw that aside. This is one of the essential tools you need for when you're jacking your car. The next one is a base plate. This is one of these mini Max Trax things. They're actually designed as a base plate. Or you can use a wooden board, a bit of steel, just something that's nice and flat. You're gonna need this for either the bottle jack or the high lift jacks. Uh, or you can get a base plate for a high lift, they also work for a bottle jack. They're actually, a, it's pretty cool to have. Now I'll use this because I can level out the camper trailer behind me as well. But anyway, throw that aside. Let's talk about high lifts first. So you need to work out what size high lift you need because we have a high lift and we have a high lift right here. This may not be big enough to lift your vehicle. This one, should be big enough, but the higher you go, the more dangerous it is. I don't like these, to be honest. I don't like high lift jacks. They're quite dangerous. I would not encourage you to go and buy a high lift jack. And not only because they're quite unsafe, there is another reason as well. So here we are at the cruiser. Where can I actually, oh, this is like a brand new high lift too. Look at that, it's still got tags on it. Put that in the pocket. So, I have two points I can use a high lift. There's one point, there's two points. I can lift the front of the car. Yeah, pretty cool. I could lift the front of the car. Let's look at the side of the car. Yes, I can actually lift the side of the car. The thing is, I have to lift the whole suspension and everything to lift the actual tire off the ground. 
when we do use a high lift to get the tire off, we usually dig a hole underneath the tire so we don't have to lift it that high. These are very dangerous. I've done a specific video just on this, description below, up in the corner, if you want to see more about high lift jacks. But I would not recommend this as your go-to tool. I can't actually use it. I could jack the tray, but I don't trust the tray mounts. There's, there's a lot of weight you're jacking on the, on the tray mounts. Ideally, you want to put it in here, but as I said, it's unsafe, these things fall over. Now, as you saw me use them, I didn't have a base plate in. It was just a quick demonstration. I don't like the high lift jack. We'll leave that one down. It doesn't, doesn't mean you shouldn't, someone shouldn't bring it. If you're in a convoy, one person bring a high lift because they got more uses than just doing that, right? And you could probably even use it in a combination with a bottle jack. But now onto my favorite piece of equipment, the bottle jack. The bottle jack is my tool of choice for lifting up the vehicle because you can lift it from the axle and you're immediately you're lifting the wheel and the axle at the same time. You don't have to lift the whole suspension and then lift the wheel with the um, high lift jacks. So if you have a Nissan Patrol, a high lift jack is pretty much bloody useless to you because they flex so well. For a 70, they're kind of half useless because they don't flex at all. However, I prefer the bottle jack. I keep the factory one and I have this eight tonner one here. But if you only want one bottle jack, I'll explain why I have two, then you can go for maybe this one here, four, four tonner. Now the reason why I recommend a four tonner, this one here is 1.8, this one here is four ton, this one here is eight ton. I recommend at least four ton because once you put all your accessories and stuff on your vehicle, you wanna make sure that it is, it can hold more than what the car weighs. I don't know, you just, ch you just trust it more. This one here I use in conjunction with this one. You can see there's a height difference here. Now, to get my vehicle off the ground, I may have to wind this right up. But to get to that point, I may have to lift the car with this one first and then slide that one in and then lift that one up. That's where two bottle jacks come in handy. You use a short one to get in tight, tight places to get the big one in after. And I've done this many times and I highly recommend the bottle jack. They take up a lot less room, they're more reliable, they're safer, providing you use a base plate. So you're gonna need two base plates in this situation here. Um, if you could only, if you only want one bottle jack, throw your factory one out, either go a four tonner or an eight tonner. But I always go for the eight tonner because, not just because of the weight, but because of the height difference. You can see right here, there's a big difference in height. This four tonner is kind of similar height to the factory one. So, look at the high lift and the bottle jacks. If you're in a convoy, one person only carries a high lift. The rest of the crew carry one bottle jack each and combined, you got a good kit. If you travel solo, two bottle jacks. Please hold for a very important message. Now onto essential tools and this is, before we get to fixing your tire, this is for just changing your tire. So, to get your spare off and put your spare on. Remember we spoke about this? Probably being too short if you modified your rims. It may not be, but it might be. Throw that out. That's a paperweight now. A lot of people will bring their socket set with their ratchet, like so. That I would not recommend. If your wheel nuts are really tight, you're gonna break your ratchet. There's a big chance of that. You need a breaker bar. So here's a breaker bar, and here's an extension. That is what you really need. And then you have your extra extension should you need it. This is what you need, uh, rather than a ratchet or this. You can see the difference here. Okay, it's far more length. You probably don't need that much length, but there's far more length. It's a lot more easier to use. Impact wrenches for tires. Uh, some are good, some you've got to be careful with. This is the cheap sort of version, the Ryobi kit. Not the greatest, but very hard to over tighten your nuts, your wheel nuts. So in this case, I kind of like these. Now with the Milwaukee's and the Snap-on, you've got to be super careful. In my opinion, I wouldn't 
fully tighten your wheel nuts or lugs with an impact wrench, I would use a breaker bar and go by feel with your hand because then you're not going to over tighten them, you're not going to snap wheel studs. So just be really careful with the impact wrenches. But if you go to the cheaper versions like these, it's pretty hard to snap your wheel studs because I can actually hold this one still like this. One last thing, impact wrenches. Make sure you have extensions. This is probably not gonna do the job. Extensions, you need them. Now we're gonna talk about where your spare tire is and places I'll highly recommend, highly recommend you do not put your tires. And I have one of those spots too. And places I would recommend you put your tires. Where not to have your tire. I see so many people, they have their tire on the roof of the vehicle. I've seen it in modified, I've seen it in many other, you know, just on the road even. To get your tire from the roof down, if you do that by yourself, good luck getting the other one back up there. That's not a good spot to put it. Uh, plus there's a lot of weight on your roof. So when you, yeah, it's wind resistance, your car will you know, rock a lot more when, you, when you're going on angles, you're going off-road, it's more likely to be a bit more tippy, you know what I mean? Especially if it's a troop carrier with, with a tire on top. I've seen that numerous times as well. Not a good place to put it. So where do you put it? Well, I've got a ute, so I can put one in here. But the other spot I don't recommend putting it is on a ute up high. This is a really bad spot to put a spare tire. This is purely here for looks. If I'm going to change a tyre, I'm going to use that one in there because I can actually reef it down and reef it up. I've got no chance here. I'll probably break my back or do something trying to get this back up. This is a two-man job to get that up there. Some wagons have the tyre underneath. Perfect. You drop it down, you wind it up. If you can keep that underneath, the wagons that have them on the back wheel, that's not too bad. But you don't want it higher than where you can lift to your centre of gravity. So. So you want the centre to basically be right here in your sternum. That's how high you want it because you're going to really struggle to get it higher than that. Do the best bet for now. These tools can be shared and these tools you may already have as well. So we'll start by tyre levers. Now. This is my old trusty one, used it many times. These are an extra two. Now, I went and got these extra two because if you ever tried to change a tire, and if you have, you know, you know what I'm gonna talk about here, you need at least two levers. But if you have three levers and a second person to help you, it is much easier and is much more pleasant to change a tire, especially these big mud tires, your stiff sidewalls onto a big rim. It is honestly a pain. So usually I'll leave that job until I get to camp or when I get home. So I recommend free tire levers. Pinch bar can also come in handy with a screwdriver if there is stuff stuck in the bead. Uh, this is another thing we've done many times and you'll get that situation eventually if you're going to off-road frequently, especially, especially in, in the sloppy stuff. You may slide into a rut sideways or you may hit a tree stump or something that bit of wood will go in between your bead and your rim. And this is where these tools come in handy because you wedge one in and you wedge another screwdriver in and then you sort of pick things out. So pinch bar, very handy. Also help you lever a tire on. Next thing we're gonna talk about will seem obvious to most off-roaders, but some still don't carry one. The air compressor. The reason why I've got this air compressor is to show you you don't need an expensive air compressor. You can get away with a cheap air compressor. I think this one's about 50 bucks or so. When I first started off-roading, I used to have a $30 compressor. That $30 compressor stayed with me for over 10 years until one day it was actually stolen out of my vehicle. Honestly, something like that will do the job. Obviously, if you have big tires, you're gonna want a bit better compressor. Not that this can't do the job, but you'll be there for a very long time. Now this is just your real simple one. It's got the fuse in here, you just plug it into your 12 volt thing and it's 50 bucks. You can even get a $20 one, but I recommend going for like a $50 one and that'll get you started. Good for small tires. 
Next thing I want to talk about is aerosol cans to get your bead, to set your bead back onto your tire when your bead pops off. I don't recommend it. I've done it six times. I've burnt myself twice. I've actually like, hurt my leg quite badly once doing it. I don't recommend doing it. There's a much better way of doing it. What I do recommend instead is get a strap. Now I'm not talking about a little strap like this. These, these won't do the job. I'm talking about a ratchet strap. You can ratchet strap around your tire, put the air compressor on it, and it'll hold the air, and eventually the bead, there'll be enough air pressure in it to force the bead out. That is the best way to do it, and it's a safe way to do it. So I wouldn't use an aerosol can. I just don't recommend it. To do this with a ratchet strap, it is much better with a high power compressor. A $50 compressor like this is probably going to struggle. It could happen. I might have to test it out, really. We could probably test it out sometime, but a high power compressor will do the job easy with a ratchet strap. I'm from the era of MC Hammer. Stop. Hammer time. The hammer. Hammer time. This, my friends, is a $5 hammer, or $5.50. I can't remember what the price was, actually. Why would you need a hammer to fix a tire? This isn't to fix the tire, this is to fix your rim. So if you have a steel rim, I've done a video on steel versus alloy rims. If you have a steel rim, you can bash it back into place with a hammer. Now the best hammer to use is one with rounded edges. This is like a, a panel beaters hammer, mechanics hammer. This is what I would use. It's $5, it costs you nothing. You can also hit 10 pegs in it and other things as well. You'll find a lot of uses for it. Just keep a hammer on board. Depending on the dent that's on your rim, this should do most small ones, and you should only really get small ones. If you have a big one, you're gonna need a serious hammer. This is a quick fix tire sealant. I would not recommend using this. This is an absolute nightmare to clean up afterwards off your rim, and if you take it back to the tire shop, they're gonna love you. <laughs> this will get you out of trouble, but uh, it will also clog up well it could also clog up your tire valve so i would not recommend using this i would use a plug-in kit and we're going to get onto plug-in kits now to what you actually need if you need patches plugs and all the other essential small things that people don't think about now talking about the puncture repair kits this is a cheap kit and i recommend cheap kits because you add your own stuff to it you can buy kits that are 50 bucks buy kits that are 100 bucks but let me share something with you this is a cheap kit this is one that we sell i'm not trying to sell this any cheap kit will do these are the basic tools that you'll get with some lubricant in this tub oh it's a bit warm so it's going everywhere and these are your standard tire plugs and this is your standard valve core remover now what you don't get with these kits with the cheap kits a pair of long nose pliers and replacement valve cores. Just get your cheap pair of pliers from a hardware or you already have in your kit, put it inside your tire repair kit and do yourself a favor and get extra valve cores. Now I bought 50 of these on eBay and as you can see, this was full. I've used quite a few. You'll be surprised how quick they wear out when you do a lot of off-roading. With this tire repair kit, one thing I have found is I go through those cords pretty quick. So let me add a 30 pack of cores. That is a, a worthy amount to get. You can get smaller packets of only five, but the price ratio, you're always better off getting 30 of them. Patches. You do not need a massive patch kit like this. This one here has 50 patches. This would last me a lifetime, even doing tag along tours. I just use the plugging kit. This is for later. So plug your tire, off you go. You don't actually need patches. Just plug your tire and off you go. And then get a uh, professional tire shop to do it. However, if you are inclined to do patches, just get a small packet. You don't need that much. This will do you probably for a lifetime. If you end up going through this whole packet, then you are, my friend, having a lot of trouble with your tires. These you cannot use on your sidewalls. The plug-in kits you can use on your sidewalls. 
So there's cords, you can put them anywhere. This will not work on a sidewall. This will only work on the actual tread, the bit that's on the road. Back on the valve cores, I wouldn't recommend just getting four. I'll get two packets, or you can go on eBay and buy an absolute bucket load if you need that many. If you don't need that many, just go to your you know, automotive store and just get two packets of four. So you've got eight in total, and that'll probably do you for perhaps a lifetime. Something else people forget about are the actual valve stems. Now I have four of these already. I just can't find them in the vehicle. So I've got these from the auto store as well, just to show you. It's the whole stem that actually come with the valve caps as well. I'm not actually sure if they come with the valve cores. They might actually, I'm not actually sure, but I'll still get some extra ones anyway. We got the valve caps. These are actually very important and I'm the most useless person for keeping these on me. You can ask anyone, you can ask Torben, you can ask Wayne, you can ask Amalia. I lose these all the time. Have some spare ones. These are really good. You get mud in those inside your valve stem, it's an absolute pain. And that's how the cores actually get worn out as well. It's all the crap that's in there. So keep these on people. And it'll actually also stop a small leak. Another important thing to bring are spare wheel studs and wheel nuts. And I recommend storing them like this because then the thread won't get damaged and you know where they all are. I carry five, I have a five stub pattern. Should I completely shear a whole lot off, which would be very unlikely, then I have spares. You should only ever really need one or two. This is my recommended kit for when you go to having spare parts and repairing your tires. Let's have a look. Tire repair kit with the uh, long nose pliers, spare valve cores. In my case, I've got a, an absolute bucket load, but you'd only need two packs of eight. There's an extra 30 cords. You'd be surprised how quick you go through these. Spare wheel nuts and studs, two spare valve stems, and if you're so inclined, carry one of these which is the actual rubber proper repair kit, the proper way of repairing a tire. I've never carried one really, never really bothered to carry one. Um, however, because I've got all this stuff here for this shoot, I'm now going to keep this on me. And next time I actually put a hole in it during an adventure or whatever, I will actually demonstrate how to use these. I've used them before, but I don't carry them. But now I will. The tools are packed away now, so if you like, to see a video on bottle jack versus air jack versus um, high lift jack, put the comments down below. If you want to see anything else, you want me to cover any topic, put, put it down below in the comments. And there's another video here about high lift jacks. Highly recommend watching that if you're considering one because they're bloody dangerous and how to use them correctly. So thank you very much for watching. You can subscribe over here and hit me up at patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl if you'd like to support the creation of content. Cheers guys, see you later.